so much for coming to Habits to Heal. I'd like to start with Shirley. So we're living in this really stressful world, like with all this increase in technology, all this change. Raise your hands if you've heard of Tai Chi. I mean, it's like pretty much everyone, right? And I think that that's because it's been in the news a lot. Just recently, another article in the New York Times. Let me ask you guys, what comes to mind when you hear the words Tai Chi? Like, what's that image that you get? Is it kind of like this? Yeah. yeah. So I think majority of the people, when they hear the term Tai Chi, they think of seniors practicing a slow movement exercise. And yes, this is Tai Chi, but this is a tiny sliver of what it's about. So I'm going to devote my talk on explaining what it is in the bigger picture. What is Tai Chi? It's two Chinese superlative words put together. Tai Chi. Both of these words mean extremes. So it's these two extreme words put together. It's a Taoist philosophy that's based on the concept of the yin yang, which we'll talk a little bit about. And it's often translated as the supreme ultimate. You know, because you've got these two extreme words put together, so it's the supreme ultimate. You know, so it's based on this yin yang theory. And I think a lot of people kind of have seen the symbol, the yin yang symbol, the swirl, where you have one side is black, one side is white. And this symbol represents in all aspects of life, there is a duality of yin and yang. And this exists. Whether you want the other side to exist or not, it will be there. If there's white, there will be black. If there's up, there will be down. If there's left, there will be right. For every point of view you have, there will be somebody else with the opposite point of view. Whether you want them to have it or not, it just exists. That is the world. And if you take a look at the swirl, there's another part of this concept where at the extreme of yang is the beginning of yin. And at the extreme of yin is the beginning of yang. I can give an example in the health and wellness um, space. I'm sure everybody knows of at least one person who has embarked on their health and wellness journey, either by starting a fitness program or starting a diet plan with the goal of being healthier, but have taken it to the extreme. Maybe took that diet to the extreme where it wound up making them sick or took their fitness to an extreme where they wound up getting injured or getting sick. That journey, once you get to that one extreme, you go and you get right back to the opposite. And that's part of this philosophy as well. And an important part is also within yin, there is yang. And within yang, there is yin. Nothing is all one thing. People are not just one thing. Nothing is just one thing. Yeah, so this is the yin yang philosophy. Now, a lot of people have seen this symbol, maybe not knowing all the aspects of the philosophy, but one thing that it has become is this static image. And I want to talk about a really important aspect of the yin yang. It is a philosophy of constant change and movement. So if you take a look at the swirl, the swirl moves. It's not static because the world is constantly changing. So for us as people, how do we become more resilient? How do we handle that change? That's what Tai Chi is all about. You can try to resist that change. You can try to stay totally still, but the world is going to change around you. So imagine, if we look at this image, if you are within that black dot and that white swirl and you want to stay still, it's going to move. It's going to move. So you can either try to follow that direction and move with it, or you can try to resist it. If you try to resist it, then what happens is physically, you will feel tense. Emotionally, you'll feel anxiety. 
you know, and all of these things come together. So the more you try to resist change, then the harder it is to deal with the stresses that happen in life. And especially in our modern life, where the pace of change is dramatic. You know, everything seems to change right when we learn it. So if we can learn how to follow that direction of the change, then it'll be easier for us to become resilient. We talked about Taiji as the supreme ultimate. If you think back to the image of what you thought of when you thought of the words Taiji, Taiji is as big or small as you want it to be. This yin yang philosophy is this biggest circle. If you take a look at the circle, this life philosophy, that's the biggest circle. In China, this is what the Chinese know of as Taiji because Taiji is this philosophy of the yin yang. But in the transmission to the West, it's become just a smaller circle that has transmitted over. So in the West, when you think of Taiji, you're just thinking of that gentle exercise. Yeah. So it is true that gentle exercise is Taiji, but there's more to it. You take it up one level. It's also a stress management tool because when you do Tai Chi, that slow movement, mindful movement, helps you to manage stress just like all the other mindful movement activities that are out there. Take it up another level. It's a wellness method. It combines your strength exercise, your cardio exercise, and meditation all in a wellness method. And this is usually where the idea of Tai Chi kind of stops in the West. And then some people know the philosophy and they want to jump right to the philosophy, but you'll notice that there is an area of the circle that is also very important. Tai Chi is a martial art. So in China, we know of Tai Chi as an internal martial art. It's Tai Chi Quan, the fist of Tai Chi. In the West, that part has been lost. So learning the wellness method, that is easy. But if you really want to learn the resiliency, understanding how to apply the concept of yin yang into your tai chi, you have to go through this harder part. And it's only hard because you need to learn how to relax. And that's the hard part for the West, is learning how to relax. So I'm going to talk a little bit more about tai chi as a martial art. In the Tao Te Ching, which is the text um, in Taoism, that's our, our most famous text in Taoism, there is a line that says, the soft and pliable will defeat the hard and strong. So Tai Chi Quan, it's an internal martial art based on the Taoist philosophy. When you are met with hard force, instead of resisting or meeting it with force, it is more effective to relax, yield, and redirect that force. So this is how the martial art works. You have to learn how to relax yourself so that you can feel the direction of the force in your opponent so that you can then learn to redirect it. The most important part is learning to relax. So in our school, we start off each of our classes with a standing meditation. We're learning how to relax, how to connect your mind with your body, how to connect the whole body together and move as one. Okay, so just stand with your feet shoulder width apart, hands hanging down by your side, and just a little bend in your knees so that your knees are soft. Feel on the top of your head, you're being suspended up, but relax your chin down while loosening up your pelvis, tucking that pelvis down. Feel that weight distribution on your feet. Don't let it sink into your heels. Close your eyes. Take a breath in through your nose and try to bring that breath down into your abdomen and breathe out through your nose. And as you inhale, just feel that tension that's in your neck and in your shoulders. As you exhale, try to bring that tension down your arms, out through each and every one of your fingers. And just let the weight of your arms hang down. And that tension leaves your torso, your back, your chest, out through your legs, out your feet, into the ground. Until you feel 
really relaxed. Open your eyes. Now what I want you to do is bring your mind to the middle of your palms. And what I want you to do is just bring the palms on top of each other. Keep your shoulders relaxed. Let your arms hang down. Keep your arms really relaxed, but bring your mind's intention right to the middle of your palms and pull them apart, keeping the two palms in line with each other, keeping your mind right in your palms. And bring it back together, keeping your mind there, and pull it apart. Inhale, pull it apart. Shoulders relax, exhale, pull it down. One more time, keeping your mind right in your palms. Up, down. Now, let your hands hover with your partner to your side. Palm over palm. Don't touch, just let palm over palm hover. Did anyone feel a certain sense of magnetic energy right in their palms? Raise your hand if you felt a little certain <laughs> magnetic energy there. That is chi. What you just experienced is chi. Chi is this essence of life. It's your body's bioelectricity. It provides nourishment to your organs, a very important aspect of traditional Chinese medicine. Chi flows through your body when it is relaxed, and it's blocked when it's tense. So when you're able to relax, then you can feel that improved circulation in your body and can feel that chi flowing. Qi is led from your mind. So in Tai Chi and in Qigong, there's a Chinese word called Yi. It means intention. It is powerful. It is the main crux of how this universe operates. So your mind is the source of your power, and your mind will lead your Qi. The power of the mind in Chinese wellness practices, you have intention, Plus qi is qigong. Qigong is an ancient wellness practice that helps to cultivate and increase the flow of qi so that you improve the functioning of your internal organs. So it's a wellness practice that's over 5,000 years old. Take intention plus qi plus internal power, and then you have tai chi. You know, and that's the practice that uh, will let you harness this idea of listening to the direction of change. How do you relax, redirect, and yield? You know, so that you can learn how to become more resilient. So next time when you see Tai Chi in the news, you'll think of more than just people moving slowly. There's a whole deep philosophy behind it. Thank you.